TF2 is one of those games that relies heavily on precision. Most of the notable weapons are single fire, and even the ones that you wouldn't think require precision, like shotguns, have variants that are entirely reliant upon it. In fact, a bunch of the really good character unlocks are things that give you benefits in exchange for precision. You got stuff like a sniper rifle that gives you a faster charge rate for hitting headshots, a one and done flare gun that requires prediction and timing to deal a significant burst of long range damage. I mean, you even got a minigun that tightens your spread, rewarding you for good tracking at mid range. So, looking at this, I think it's clear that TF2's design not only centers around movement, but also around being precise. What the hell is that? Smite! Oh, boy. I'm gonna have to talk about this, huh? Wait, 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 wait. Hang on, hang on, hang on. I really don't want to do this, man. Ethan, do it. Dude, no. All right, look, I, I just spent the entire intro talking about precision, and this is the exact opposite of that. I mean, look at it. Soldier pulled it out of a dumpster. It's canonically actual literal trash. Ethan. No, come on, man. Ethan. <sighs> Look, dude, you're quitting stereotypes soon. You gotta have something take its place, right? I mean, yeah. And you have the series get sponsored by Marketplace.tf, the useful and convenient website that allows you to buy TF2 items instantly and for cheaper than the Steam market. Wait, did you actually just put the sponsor plug in the intro? And this is one of those weapons that's just dumb most of the time. You like that kind of stuff, don't you? Yeah. Yeah, alright. I uh, Yeah, I guess you're right. <sighs> okay. Hey, hey, look alive, sellout. You got a video to make. Oh, you are just the worst. All right, let's do this. The Beggar's Bazooka is fundamentally different from any of Soldier's other unlocks. Instead of firing when the mouse one button is pressed, you instead load a rocket upon clicking and fire it when you release. It's roughly similar to charging up a smash attack, or using the classic if you're into masochism. But uh, yeah, this thing will allow you to charge up to three rockets before it overloads, and swiftly turns you into a can of chunky human soup. Put simply, this thing is really weird. So, as a beggar's bazooka soldier, it is your job to be just as weird. Basically, I'm saying you should use this like a total idiot, because God knows it's gonna let you get away with it. Practically everything about this weapon rewards you for playing like a moron. Uh, okay, example. This thing can fire almost as fast as the stock launcher, but since the clip works differently from stock, you draw the rockets directly from your reserve. This means that if you tap mouse one a bunch of times, you essentially have an infinite clip, and you don't have to worry about rocket management at all. Put into practice, this basically looks like... well... Jesus! Guys, you don't understand, this blue just smells freaking amazing. So I think there's a better word to describe what you should be as a beggar soldier. A savant. Like, don't get me wrong, there's definitely some mechanical skill involved here, and if you get good at it, well, the skill ceiling's still crazy high. But even if you don't know what you're doing, you can still clean house very easily. Like, look, let me give you an example. So in this clip, I get distracted by a friendly, because he's really cute, and oh, okay, all right, and oh shit, this guy, okay, no problem, I'll corner peek him, okay, got him. Wait, what the fuck? Hang on. Wait, 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 wait. So if that wasn't him, then who was it? Who are you? Why did I kill you? I, I, it doesn't matter. In this clip, I see some people coming up from sewers, so I go ahead and get ready to meet them. And then I'm gonna go around here and just fire off a rocket for no reason. And guess what happens next? Go on, guess. Yeah, you guessed it. There's a spy there. Did I know that? <laughs> no. Am I gonna pretend like I knew that? Yeah, of course I am. This is the TF2 equivalent of the drunken fist. That's my thing, dude. Then I'm gonna go ahead and go kill these guys with a shitload of spam, you know, as you do. Yeah, that's right, Scout. You, yeah, that's right. Run, run from my overwhelming power. He, he, he got away, but that doesn't matter. Let's just ignore that part. All right, so I know there's a sniper watching a sight line somewhere, so I'm gonna need to be careful here. I don't wanna peek prematurely or anything like that. You know what, just kidding. Fuck your sight lines. I've got a beggar's bazooka. That means you're already dead. Positioning? What's that? <sighs> hey, speaking of positioning, let's talk about this part on the stats. Yeah, that red text that talks about overloading, yeah, that's supposed to be a downside, but it's actually the best part about the entire weapon. That overload lets you do this. Mid-air jumps, with no need for a wall to jump off of. Combine that with the fact that you essentially have an infinite clip to pogo afterwards, and you can basically put yourself anywhere on the map you want to be at any time. It's kind of stupid. Oh, 
So, yeah, saying this thing has high mobility is the understatement of the century. Like, look at this. I'm gonna start over here and then just go flying up the hill and then slide up the ramp, see if I can find anybody over here. There's, uh, nobody. Okay, hang on. Where is everybody? Let me just check down here. Oh, hey, here's someone, and boom, you're dead. No walls, no problem. Let's just go ahead and jump right on up here and then jump off the air molecules, and boom, you're dead. Load up some rockets, jump up here, and oh shit, he's, uh, um... Yeah, I totally meant to do that. What are you talking about? All right, so I know the scout's been liking to go to the tower recently. Yep, okay, yeah, you're dead instantly. All right, now we took care of him. Let's go ahead and jump over here, see if we can find anybody. While we're over here, we might as well get some health. Reset. And, oh, okay, this guy got the drop on me. Better teleport to the other side of the map. Hey, guess what? You're dead instantly. Now I'm dead instantly. That's how fast the beggars kill shit. This thing will basically push the source engine to its limits. And honestly, I think it's only a matter of time before it pushes it beyond that. We'll be right back after a quick message from our sponsor. Man's Guide is sponsored by Markiplier.t- Wait. <laughs> I can't talk to you. Okay, hang on. Man's Guide is sponsored by Marketplace.tf, the useful and convenient website that, yes, is cheaper than the Steam Market. It's not a marketing buzzword, it's actually just way cheaper, see? Marketplace.tf was launched in 2013 and is made by the same people behind Scrap.tf and Backpack.tf, so in terms of convenience, you already know it's gonna be pretty high tier. You can buy or sell TF2 items for straight cash, no BS. There's just a single 10% fee compared to the Steam Community Market's 15%, and that fee isn't placed on the buyer like lots of other services will try to do. If you're selling items, you can set up your own little shop, and then when you sell stuff, you can use that money to buy other items in the site, or you can just get a PayPal payout within five minutes with no additional fee. It's fast, it's cheap, it's easy, and there's a link in the description if you're interested. Oh, wait, I almost forgot. That's not even the best part. The totally awesome thing about this site is that there's no gambling involved, unlike win free F2 items, no virus, I promise, TF over there. So for me to have my video be sponsored by it is, well, you know, it's actually legal. Let's get right back to our feature presentation. Hey. Right. Yeah, hang on, I gotta sneeze. <laughs> Let's talk about the barrage mechanic. You know, the thing the weapon was supposed to be based on? Yeah, I just realized I hadn't talked about that yet. I kind of got distracted repeatedly tapping mouse one and sniffing glue, so I, I, I just kind of forgot. Anyway, the barrage mechanic is, you guessed it, incredibly strong. In terms of raw burst damage, it's already ridiculous, but when you think about overload jumping and how you can sync up your rockets to connect even closer to one another, and how damage fall off is calculated with player distance to rocket and not total distance travel, and how you can hold the barrage mechanic by taunting and... I, you know what, I'm just gonna let these clips speak for themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. <laughs> yeah, this is big brain time. Hey, can you give me another piece of it? I've been waiting for this. Captain! Yeah, yeah? Wait, what? I, um... <sighs> well, all right then. Look, much like the soldiers who use this thing, I've been kind of aimless with what I'm talking about here. I've just been kind of jumping around from topic to topic, from mechanic to mechanic, with no real cohesion or thought put into it at all. So I'm gonna try and reel this video back in. How should you, a real Manco mercenary, use the beggar's bazooka? Well, to do that, I'm gonna have to talk about one more mechanic, as well as my favorite thing in video games, RNG.
The Beggar's Bazooka has a firing radius larger than stocks. Specifically, it can fire anywhere within a 3 degree cone starting at the barrel of the launcher. Or possibly the grip, depending on who you ask. And it certainly feels less precise than 3 degrees, but... I, whatever. This means that you could theoretically hit an airshot anywhere within that cone, because the rocket could go anywhere, right? And when you consider that TF2 has an aim lock, you can only aim so far up, you realize that the beggars could fire past that. So theoretically, this means that you could hit more air shots with the beggars bazooka. Because of this, the best way to play beggar soldier is clearly to just go for air shots. I, oh, okay, you don't believe me, you, just, you need an example, just watch. Shit. Fuck! I feel like I'm trying to take a piss while I'm shit-faced. Goddamn piece of shit. Fine, I'll just... I, oh shit! I did it! I did it! Wait, where'd it go? Give me! See? A third of the time, it works all the time. What'd I tell you? Seriously though, sarcastic anti-tutorial bit aside, there are going to be moments where the rocket deviation works in your favor. I mean, really? How do you dodge a soldier's rockets when even he doesn't know where the heck they're gonna go? Honestly, when you're using this thing, it's basically like you're playing the lottery. You could either hit lucky sevens or get served the freshest of ass -hopping. Wait, what? That makes no fucking sense. Who wrote that? That was me. What about it? Also language. We're trying to boost CPM, remember? You tried to draw a comparison to the lottery, but your reasoning for it was because of a slot machine? I mean, uh, okay, I guess I'll buy that. It's a stretch, but they're both related to gambling. But then there's the ass-whooping part. What, what does that have to do with gambling? It's stupid. You're stupid. Just shut up, man. All right, stop messing with my script. I can handle this. Okay, here's an alternate bit. Okay, hang on. Uh, so basically, it's like throwing your shit at a wall because sometimes it sticks and sometimes you get thrown in a padded cell. And then you realize you were in a padded cell because you were throwing shit at people. Okay, that, that's funny, but that makes no sense either. KJ, I love you, dude, but you can't write a script or convincingly voice act to save your life. I mean, I'm not exactly setting a high bar here, but dude, come on. It's my show. I'm the producer. And I'm the editor and the host. And I say that your analogy made no sense. This, this whole thing makes no sense. Well, make more sense if you're a real beggar soldier. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and rate the beggar's bazooka two degrees of rocket deviation out of five. I really wanna like this weapon, the movement shit it can do is awesome, but the weird, imprecise bullshit and unrelentingly stupid play style that it promotes is just absolutely Okay, guys, I'm gonna have to give this weapon a six out of two sound smith points. Hey, when do I get paid? How does that get dick? Man's Guide is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Nobody laughed, but they were there, trust me. Gators.